I've come to Bruntingthorpe Aerodrome, where a team of engineers are hard at work saving the last flight-worthy specimen of Britain's greatest Cold War bomber. To me, the Vulcan bomber says the future has landed 1950s style. It's like a spaceship from a Dan Dare comic book. It was built to play a deadly game of nuclear who dares wins, pointing east, ready to launch at a moment's notice to scare the Soviets from launching an attack. The brief was to design a bomber that could fly 10 miles above the ground to avoid enemy radar, while carrying a four and a half ton bomb to a target nearly 2,000 miles away. But pistons and propellers would never get the Vulcan to the high speed and altitude it depended on for success. It relied on another great World War II invention, the jet engine. Perfect for the Vulcan because it really comes into its own at high altitude. As you fly higher, the air becomes thinner and propellers struggle for grip. Most Second World War fighters hit the ceiling at around 35,000 feet. Jet thrust comes from high-speed gases being forced out of the back, allowing jet aircraft to fly much higher without the losing grip problem. In the thinner air, drag on your aircraft is greatly reduced, which means you can go a lot faster and burn less fuel. Jet engines made possible a vastly different breed of aircraft. In 1947, Roy Chadwick, the brains behind the hugely successful World War II Lancaster bomber, sketched a radical new design to meet the government's requirements for a nuclear bomber. Chadwick's first draft looked something like this. A pure triangular or delta wing with engines built into the wings and originally no tail at all. Sadly, Chadwick died shortly after completing his famous sketch, but his idea stuck, and the Avro company, who'd built the Lancaster, pushed on with the project. In 1952, Avro started flight testing their giant flying wing, the Type 698, with pilot Roly Falk at the controls. The Vulcan was a step into the unknown. There were no sophisticated monitoring devices. They simply used a cine camera to record data from the flight controls. The team spent four years perfecting the Delta Wing technology until the Vulcan was ready for active service. The B-1, as it was known, had four Olympus jet engines generating roughly three times more power than the best piston engines at the time. The swept back wings allowed the Vulcan to fly at over 500 miles an hour. The massive wings generated plenty of lift to carry the Vulcan and its bomb load up to 50,000 feet out of reach of enemy radar. The design was a huge success. A thrilling, fearsome symbol of Britain's nuclear deterrent.